Hello my friends, in today's episode on Grainificent, in today's episode I will be doing a as thorough as I can how to use every button, how to set every setting and what everything does on this camera, on the Canon EOS 5 film camera also known on other markets A2, A2E with the digital back I guess and the 5QD with the time digital back as well. I'll be showing you how to set everything. Let's get into it. So starting from the back doors here, we of course here got the digital back. From the top here, we got our drive mode. When we click this button on the screen, we got our drive mode. And to change it, we just use this wheel from single shot to high speed to high speed plus. The next button down, we got our AF button to choose our autofocus mode from one shot to all servo. And the next button down, we have the light meter. We can choose from evaluative metering, spot metering, and this empty window would be the center weighed average. The next button, has multiple options to choose from when we're setting it. The first option is ISO. If you would like to override your ISO, if for example you want to shoot at a different ISO than your film canister has the ISO code, the DX code on it, or you put in a canister without the DX code on it and you would want to manually set your ISO, you do this pressing this button until you get the ISO. As you see, if we press it more than once, we get other options. So we just cycle through it until we get our ISO. And with this top wheel, we change the options. So the next function is automatic exposure bracketing. As you see, it's the second function. You choose how many stops you want to bracket your shot. And you would have to physically take three shots. The camera would automatically change the settings. We have one setting. And the second setting. And now the third setting. As you see, the light flashes also to tell you which part of the bracket you are taking. Just like that. And you start all over from zero. And the next setting is red eye reduction. We can turn it on by pressing going to one with the top wheel or turn it off going to zero. If you turn it on, you will have the red eye icon showing here. If you turn it off, it will be gone. And the next is beeping. When you turn it on, it will beep when it catches focus. But that only works on one shot out of focus. If you have changed to all servo, it will not beep when you are blocking on focus. And so we went through all those settings here. Now let's get into the digital back if you have one. So on your digital back, the clock, we change the mode with this mode button, the display mode. However, you want the date to be imprinted on your photos. So if you have just hyphens, minuses, that means it will not imprint any information on your photos. One option down from the hyphens is the month day and year function. If you press it again, you change the format to day, month, year. When you press it again, you get another format, year, month, day. And one more option, you get day of the month and the time. If you don't want to specifically print what month and year, because currently I would say this is the only option that's usable because the year range on this camera goes from 87 to 19. Of course, to change the settings, you would need something sharp because of course you can't change it by finger. You can't put your finger in there. You can't press it in deep enough. So let's say we would want to change the month, day and year. Let's say to my favorite format would be the day, month, year. If you would want to change that. So to change something on the display, 
we click this, press in the select button and one of the digits starts blinking, the year first. So we click set until we have the desired year set. Of course, this goes from 87 all the way up to 2019 and then it resets again from 87. I don't know why the engineers decided to do that. They could have just done that. Both digits can go from zero to nine on both spaces. I assume you would have to do a lot of clicking to get through there. So they didn't expect the camera to live so long, right? But if we have set the desired year, we click select again, and now we can set the desired month. So let's, for example, set the month to Currently we have February. Well, let's set it to two and select again. And today is the 23rd. So let's set it to the 23rd. There we go. And we click select again and we have everything set. If we want to change the time, you would have to change the mode into day and time to set the correct time. So again, we choose select and we got the hours first. So let's change it to 11 o'clock currently. And as you see, we have the 24 hour clock on the digital back in my case. So let's set it to, to 11 o'clock, just like that and click select again. And now we can set the minutes. So let's change it to 33. We can hold the set button for the counter to go faster. 1134, let's keep it that way. And we click set again and everything is set. So that's how we set the digital back date and time. But of course I don't use it. So I just keep the minuses on here. And while we're on the back here, this button over here, when this is on the zero, this dial is turned off and it does not work. When it is on the one, this dial will then work. As you see in complete manual, this mode can change the aperture. If you turn it off, nothing will work. So this is the lock for this wheel. And so with this button on the top here, we set our autofocus points, which one we want to use, all of them, or a specific autofocus point. And this button is either exposure lock or custom function. I have it set to custom function. As you can hear the sound it's making, it's set to depth of field preview because I don't use the, exp the exposure lock so a depth of field preview is sometimes helpful so that's what I have it set to and you can change that in the custom functions menu we will get to that soon okay so we have everything in the back here of course this is the viewfinder I guess that's logical. In the viewfinder, we see our five autofocus points. They light up only in single shot to tell you which one is in focus. On Al Servo, at least in my model, I don't know if that's standard, you don't have light up spots. So in Al Servo, you do not know which one is exactly in focus and which one isn't. So keep that in mind. On the bottom of the screen, when you press in half press the shutter, you will have your settings and your exposure. Of course, I have it set also a custom function that as soon as I let go, it disappears to save battery life. You could set a custom function that this stays lit up even when you let go of your shutter button for some time, but I have it set that it disappears right away. And of course, over here, we got the self timer. We click it once and a little clock appears on the screen and we click it again and it disappears. So when we set the self timer, it gives us 10 seconds before it takes the shot and it beeps. And it flashes when it's about to take the photo and it's about 10 seconds there. On the top, of course, we got the hot shoe and it has all TTL functionality. And on the opposite side here, we got the flash button. When we press this button, the flash comes out. And in complete manual with the flash out, the flash sync is 1 200th of a second. The built-in flash zooms automatically depending on the chosen focal length. You have to half press the shutter for the setting to update in the flash, but it, it zooms automatically. And the zoom range is for 28, 50 or 80 millimeters. To close the flash, we just press it in. Of course, on the top, we got our screen, we got our wheel, and we got our shutter release here. On the left side here, of course, we got our battery compartment. We lift the handle and we open turning counterclockwise 
and we take off the grip and we have our 2CR5 battery. We just insert it just like this. If your battery doesn't have a tag with this indented side inside, you can't really put it in another way. You have to do it just this one way. So when you insert the battery, you put the grip back on and you turn it clockwise to lock and it stays on. This is the manual rewind button over here. Now this port underneath here, under the automat the manual rewind, when you unscrew this, this is the three pin remote switch connection. If you got the remote shutter release, it plugs in right over here. You should have a little plastic tab to protect this port, just like that. Now on the front of the camera, there isn't any buttons. You got your AF assist light over here or the self timer light. And of course, to release the lens, you got the lens release button and you turn the lens counterclockwise when you are holding your camera like that. And inside we got, of course, the mirror, the connections, uh, standard stuff. So to connect the lens back up, we align the red dots and we lock it in place. And on the lens, depending on what kind of lens you got, you could have an out of focus, manual focus button, your zoom ring and your manual focus ring. Of course, that all depends on the lens you have. So continuing further on the right side of the camera body, we have the back door open button. And beneath here, of course, another port that is screwed shut with a plastic cap. It's a PC port for an external flash. If you have a flash that doesn't go on a hot shoe, yes, you would want to connect it through the PC port. This is where you connect it to. So while we were Inside here, we have the cartridge compartment with the DX code readers, of course, the shutter. And on the, here we have the pickup spool, the mark where to load the film, how far to load the film. And up here in the corner, of course, we got the infrared film counter. So this camera can't do infrared film photography because you can't turn this off, so it will leave marks on your infrared film because it does give off infrared light. On the back plates here, we got the little window for the film, so you see what film you have loaded. Seals around it, so you should make sure that the seals are good. And over here, we have the little compartment for the for the digital back battery. It says right on there that it uses the CR2025 3 volt battery. You just unscrew this screw and replace the battery when your back isn't working. And over here you have the inside there, you have the digital time imprinting. When you're taking photos and you would want to change to a different roll mid shot, without finishing your roll and you have your custom function set to leave the film meter out at any time you just remember what frame you were on you click the manual film rewind button it will rewind the film back leaving the film meter out you take the film out you put in a new film of course remembering to reach this film loading mark and you take shots with another film. And again, when you want to change film mid-roll, you manually rewind the film. It leaves the mark out. And how to get back to the frame you were at. That's why it is important to load it to the mark, but that the brackets don't pass the film counter because that ensures that it's accurate frame placement. So you load the film on that had, for example, it was on the seventh frame. You load it back in. You close the doors and you will have to take photos to get back to that frame. But, so you don't make double exposures, put, in, put on your cap, change the film speed to like 8,000th of a second, the fastest your shutter can go, the aperture to 22nd, and in a darker shadowy area or something, so you're 100% triple, double, quadruple sure that you won't make double exposures and you might want to ch change to all servo because in one shot your camera won't want to take a picture without being in focus so either all servo or manual fun focus function if your lens allows that so with all these settings you then 
take the pictures so you're back to frame 7. At this point you take the lens cap off, get back to your settings that you want and you can continue taking photos on this roll without worrying that any frames will be double exposed. So that's how you can change to different multiple types of films without finishing each one. Just keep a marker handy or something so you can mark each roll what frame it was on when you took it out so you know exactly where you were at at that roll. Where would you want to use such function? Like for example using high speed film when inside a building and using low speed film in the sunlight outside so you can change rolls going in and out of the building or from color photography to black and white photography as well you can change at any time. So let's now get into the functions here. This camera has a lot of functions of course if you have a blank screen and nothing's on, your camera might be in low or the battery's dead or some other problem. Check your battery first, check if this is in low. If you change it to any other function, the screen will light up. If you want to turn your camera off, you set it back to L. And so going into the automatic modes, the green screen, of course, is full auto. In the full auto mode, the interesting thing is that if the flash is needed, it will pop out automatically, flash for the photo, and hide by itself. Just like that. So that's a little funny, interesting option that it doesn't stay out like in most cameras that you have to manually press it in. It just comes out whenever it needed. And if it decides it doesn't need a flash, it won't pop out. Just like that. So it decides for you if it needs a flash or not. In full auto, of course, you can't change any of the options. The buttons just won't work. So in full auto, you have a standard single shot, all focus, with the beep and the evaluative metering. When we go down to the next option, that is portrait mode, as we see, our options change to a higher speed shutter. It's not a single shot. Autofocus mode is changed to one shot. And of course, you still got the evaluative metering. So these settings go for portrait mode. And also the flash does fire if it decides that either it's too dark or it also does flash when your subject is heavily backlit. It will detect that there is strong backlighting. So the next function is landscape. For landscape, we have single shot, one shot, and also evaluative metering. The next is of course, close up photography. We have set single shot, one shot, evaluative metering. This is if your lens has a macro capability, automatic mode for that as well. The flash will flash when needed, so you have to be careful because if you have a long lens and you're taking a macro shot up close, your lens can block the flash. So you have to watch out for that in this automatic mode. Next we have sports mode. So you set it to, to very high frames per second mode, all servo to continually change the autofocus, and of course we still have evaluative metering. So into the manual functions, we have program. In program mode, we can change different settings up on the screen, but the exposure is still set to basically automatic exposure. When turning the back wheel, we can set exposure compensation when the shutter is half pressed. And when the shutter is half pressed, of course, if you have the metering on for some time after you release the shutter, then it won't disappear too quickly. My camera stops metering as soon as I let go because that's how it's set. But if you do double fingers, when you half press the shutter and you use the top wheel, it changes to different exposure settings to keep the same exposure. Now in TV mode, we watch TV on the screen, of course. Stupid joke. TV is time priority or shutter priority, however you want to call it. In this mode, you change the shutter speed and the camera automatically decides which aperture is best. Of course, if your aperture is blinking, that means it is the camera wants a different aperture setting than available by your camera. As you see, 
it chooses the aperture, but if it can't choose the aperture, it will be blinking. Next in line, we have aperture priority. In aperture priority, we have the opposite way around. You choose the aperture with the top wheel and the camera will decide about the time, the shutter speed, just like that. And the next mode we have is manual mode. Of course, in manual mode, you decide about each and every setting. The back wheel goes for the aperture and the top wheel goes for the shutter speed. In depth of field mode, it is an interesting mode on this camera because you point to your first object, half press, and you got DEP1. That means it detected the first object. Change object and click again, you got DEP2. That means it detected the second object. And third time for the exposure, and you click the photo. In this mode, the camera will decide what aperture to use depending on the distance between the two subjects. So you will have both of them in focus. Of course, if the distance between them is too far, then it's not gonna work. Checking it on a wide angle lens, it's much, much easier to get very big depth of field. If you would have a very long lens, that might be harder to achieve because your camera would want a higher aperture than physically possible by the lens to get a very big depth of field. So you have to keep that in mind, of course. Next, we have the X mode. That's for the X-Men. That's when they come in to help, of course. Joke again. Yes, that's the flash mode. If you're using external flash, not through the hot shoe, this time with the top wheel, you change your aperture. And with the back wheel, you change different flash sync speeds that are possible. It goes from 60 all the way up to 200, depending on the flash you are using. So you have to check in the manual of the specific flash you are using this mode on. And the top button, calibrate. The calibrate button, of course, is for the eye focusing mode. That means the camera focuses using the autofocus point your eye is looking at out of the five you have. When you get into calibrate, you have that the eye focus is off. If you want to turn it on, you choose the calibration profile. If it's blinking, that means it's not set. One and two are not blinking, that means they're set because I was testing it out bef before. If you want to set a new profile for one, we just get in, get in there. When it starts blinking, we put our eye to the camera. We look at the blinking autofocus point and we click the shutter halfway. And when it registers our eye looking at it, the opposite side blinks for you to look at the opposite side. So you look at the opposite side and you press the shutter halfway in as well. And on the bottom, it will say end calibration. That means it calibrated successfully. And now you could use your eye to choose which points you want to focus on. Of course, that is only available in one shot autofocus. That is not available in automatic all servo focus. Also, when you calibrate your eye and you have profile selected, you will have a little marker here showing you that eye focus is on. To turn off eye focus, you go back into calibrate and you change it to off. You choose a profile, go back to taking photos to use it. When you don't need it, you change it to off and then go back to the selected mode. So then we go into the custom function menu. We change the functions with the top wheel. And if you want to change the setting, we use the CF button over here to change it from zero to one, depending if you want to turn it on or off. So custom function one changes the speed of rewinding the film. One is the high speed mode. Zero is the standard speed mode. I always have it set to high speed mode. I haven't found any much uh, use for the standard mode. I don't know if, I, I guess the high speed mode just uses up your battery a little bit faster, but you could change that here. Custom setting two is the setting we like if we want to leave the film leader out when rewinding. When it's set to zero, it will rewind the film all the way back into the cartridge. When we set it to one, it leaves the film leader out when rewinding. Custom function three 
This function cancels automatic film speed setting with DX coded film. So if, if you want that on, the automatic settings will not work. If you turn it off to zero, that means the camera will read the code from the cartridge and decide about the ISO. Of course, you can always override that. So I never have this function on. Number four, switches the autofocus start function from the shutter button to the AE lock button. That means here when you press, when you change this to on, this will start the autofocus on, on the camera, not half pressing the button. So you would press this to set the autofocus and then this to take the photo. That's some people use that. I don't, so that I have it off. Custom function five. This changes the single exposure operation to allow the next exposure only after the shutter button is fully returned to the off position. So I have this on because it will change the exposure only when you let go completely. It won't change while you're half pressing in the single shot mode. So uh, yeah, that's what, because if you turn it on, uh, it will ensure that a fresh meter reading will be taken before each exposure. In case you're taking multiple shots, sometimes it might not change the exposure if you're using one of the automatic modes before another shot is taken. So when you have this off, every time you let go of the button and press it again, a new exposure is taken. Custom function six, of course, this one changes the function of the AE lock button to temporarily stop out of focusing operation in all servo mode. That's the description of this function. You use this function when you wish to temporarily fix the focus at a certain point when shooting sports or action with all servo out of focus. This custom function cannot be used together with cu custom function 4. So custom function 4 was the switching out of focus from the shutter button to the AE button. So yeah, that's some special function that I never use. Custom function 7 prohibits firing of the AF auxiliary light during autofocusing. So if you don't want the auxiliary autofocus light to flash, so to help you with uh, autofocusing, for example, if there's two photographers taking photos, another photographer taking a photograph while your AF light is on, uh, it will come out on his photos. So I keep that to zero. That means my AF light does fire because it's mostly times helpful. If I were shooting with a second photographer, this option would be set to one to prohibit firing of the AF assist beam. So custom function eight prohibits cancellation of multiple exposure mode after a single frame. Yeah, so that's with the, that's a custom function for the exposure bracketing mode. Uh, I don't use that as well. It prohibits cancellation of multiple exposure mode after a single frame. That means you have to take the three exposures if you t turn this on in the bracketing mo mode. It's just a little setting that you don't accidentally cancel the exposure bracketing. And custom function nine, that fixes the shutter speed at one over 200th of a second when using flash. That means you won't be able to change to any other speed. So of course I have this off, so I could change to different speeds when using flash. Custom mode 10 prohibits superimposed out of focus frames in the viewfinder. That is when a subject is focused, the AF frame used for focusing normally lights red in the viewfinder. Setting this function stops this from happening. So if you don't want the in single shot, if you don't want your autofocus frames to light up what is in, auto, in focus, you would set this to one. Of course, I want mine to light up, so it's set to zero. And custom setting 11 adds a depth of field check function to the AE lock button. That's what I have set, so I have depth of field preview with the AE lock button. Custom function 12 enables shooting with the mirror locked up. So when this shutter button is pressed completely in self timer mode, the mirror moves up immediately and the picture is taken two seconds later. If you would be doing longer exposures and you don't want mirror shake, when you set this to on, after you click the shutter button, shutter release button, the mirror will lock up wait two seconds and then the long exposure will start being taken. So that's to prevent mirror shake. Custom function 13. This cancels the metering timer function. 
That means setting this function cancels the timer which continues metering for 6 seconds after your finger is removed from the shutter button, saving some battery power. That's what I have turned on. That means the green text in the viewfinder with the metering, it will be on only when I have the shutter half pressed. As soon as I let go, this turns off. That sometimes helps, sometimes is annoying, but for me it helps most of the times. So custom function 14 changes the sync time of the built-in flash from first curtain sync to second curtain sync. If you want to sync your built-in flash to second curtain, this is where you set it. Custom function 15 links spot metering to the selected autofocus frame only when the autofocus frame is selected by the user. So setting this function lets you carry out spot metering at the same point as the selected autofocus frame, eliminating the need to change the scene composition during metering. So that is helpful. I have that set to one. So if I change if I have a selected autofocus frame, it will spot meter for that frame. And custom function 16, setting this function cancels the automatic flash reduction control which normally operates with backlit subjects, thus preventing the underexposure which can occur with subjects backlit by a strong light source such as the afternoon sun. If you would be using the automatic settings and you wouldn't want your flash to fire on backlit subjects, that's where you would choose the one. But I have it off because I wanted to correct for that. And that would be all in the custom function menu. So to turn the camera off, we set it to L and the camera is off. So I hope this was a very educational how to use video. This camera has a lot of great functions. So I hope you liked this how to video. If you got any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments down below. I will try to answer them as well as I could. And also a little advertisement for my channel. Of course, it's my self advertisement. So yes, if you would like to leave a little donation, there is a link in the description below as well. There is a link in the description below uh, how to load and unload this camera. And if you would like to see my videos much earlier than they come out or have other perks, you are invited to look into this channel's membership benefits. Maybe you will find something interesting for you. And by the way, you can help the channel grow as well. I could make much more videos with much more equipment. So thank you for watching my friends. Take care and see you in the next video.